So to introduce you to the concept of tweens, I'm going to show you another cool moves feature which is called onion skinning, which if you're familiar with animation you'll know that's a way to be able to see the frames that you've drawn before and the frames you've drawn afterwards. So you just go into the options menu and select onion skinning and check the little tick box. The default number of frames is 4, but you can have any number you want for however many frames you want to see before the current frame and however many you want for after, but we'll just keep it at 4 for now. You'll see here now we can still see frame 2, but keyframe 1 is now visible, but it's slightly ghosted out. And if I switch between the two, you'll see whichever frame is the current one is the one that's the clearest and the darkest. And whichever frame is being onion skinned is slightly ghosted. So what we're going to do is add some tweens between frame 1 and frame 2. So to do that, I'm on keyframe 1. I'll go to the tweens button down here and we'll add 12 tweens. All tweens do is create frames generated by the computer that transform this character from this position into this position here. And to see that in action we have to go back to the main movie as you can see, our character appears to have disappeared right off the stage. Uh, that's simply because of their, the character's position within the movie file. To find it, you just need to zoom out. And you'll see, here's my character over here. All I need to do is select and move them back onto the stage. I'll put him down here. And then go back to one times. That won't affect the position of the character within the movie file, it just affect the position of the character out in the main movie. So now to preview that, we just click the preview button down here and select play in web browser can see there that's my character being transformed from one position, the standing position to the kicking position and clearly that doesn't look very realistic but that's the purpose of tweens is to try and reduce the amount of drawing that you actually do getting from one position to the next position. However, I'll just close that down and we'll go back into our movie. What we're going to do, in order to make that more realistic or a better transition, we need to draw more keyframes. So we need to do something that's part way between this and this in order to make that tweening more original or more accurate. So to do that I'm going to get my trace image back. Yeah. Put it on two times magnification because that's what we traced it on originally. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and draw this frame here. But I won't make you sit through me drawing that. We'll come back when I'm done. So now I've drawn my second keyframe image. As you can see here, I'll remove the trace image so that you can see it more clearly. See, that's my second keyframe. 
that's my first and that's my third and go back to one time zoom so you can see them there what I've also done is you see down in the tweens here I've increased the number of tweens to 25 on keyframe 1 and 2 so that you can have a better idea of what's going on we'll go back to the main movie and we'll preview what we've done so far we'll do play in web browser so you can see here much more clearly that my character is now morphing between the original standing pick position keyframe 2 and then keyframe 3 but it still doesn't look very realistic in terms of an action pose which is why we need to do even more keyframes to try and get this pose working and looking far more realistic so we'll go back into our movie and what I'm going to do is add in more keyframes go to two times bring up the trace image what I'm going to do is go through and draw all the rest of these keyframes and then we'll come back and I'll show you what that looks like so here you can see I've completed all of my keyframes and I've positioned them on the frame so that this forms one sequence of movement so that each of the keyframes is happening relative to the previous one if I go back now and turn onion skinning off by going into the options menu just taking out my onion skin you'll see if I do the slider at the bottom you'll get that nice animated movement of just the keyframes with no tweens the faster I do that the faster he moves so if I go back to the main movie now we can view that with all the keyframes and all the tweens that I put in each of those movements has 25 tweens which is actually way too many because it will make it look like he's doing it moving in slow motion but you'll be able to see how the computer is sort of calculating the movements in between you can see there it's not too bad like it's not perfect and obviously I could do a lot of fine tuning to get that movement more natural perhaps put in even more keyframes but you get the idea that the idea of tweening is so that you only have to draw as many keyframes as is necessary for the computer to calculate the movement that you're trying to simulate so obviously this is a kick and it would happen very fast in a fight it wouldn't happen that slow so I need to reduce the number of tweens it's quite possible I won't even need tweens I might be able to just get away with having just the keyframes and it will look great with just those but that's something that you would fine tune yourself I'll go back into my movie file go back to where my characters are over here and if you didn't if you wanted to you could move your characters over and 
get them back in the center up here. To do that, to make sure everything moves relative to the character that you're moving, you can use this tool, which determines what happens when you change something on a frame and whether that happens to all frames or just uh, the frames previous or the frames ahead. So if you select this tool, that's all frames. If you select this tool, any change you make will happen to every frame from this frame back to the beginning. And this one, every tool, every thing you select and change will happen to everything from the current frame to the end. So we want our movement to happen on all frames. So I select the all frame ones. Then I select everything. You'll notice my points are now all in red instead of purple indicate that my change is going to happen to all frames. So if I click and drag that and move this character over to more in the center, let go, it'll ask, check to make sure I want to change all of them and I do. Hopefully all being well. Now, when I check my other frames, they should have all moved relative to that frame. So you can see they all have. Now my character is in the center of this movie frame. So I change that back to just this frame. But you'll notice if I go back to my main movie now, my character's been moved out here because I moved it inside its movie file. So I need to just move that back onto the stage so that when I preview it, I'll be able to see it. You can see there. It's now back on the stage. I can see him working. But if I go back into the movie file, you'll be in exactly the spot that we positioned him originally around the center. For this kick to be more effective or more flexible in GoAnimate, what you might also do is instead of having this flow as a sequence, you could have it all happen just on the spot so that he jumps kicks and lands all on the same spot and this would make it more flexible in GoAnimate for when you're doing kicks using this action because you would be able to sort of adjust your distance that he actually kicks more accurately without including this distance that we've got here and also would make the transition from this action into another action smoother because when you change to another action this will already be centered over here where it started rather than finishing over here. So I'm going to go through and do that and when I come back I'll have all of this character centered so that he jumps and lands all in the same position.